We should rise to the noble position of a saint, and to do that we must possess compassion, love, understanding, and unselfish sacrifice at all times. Please continue watching to find out more. Aloha, lovely viewers. I am Leah from Picturesque Honolulu. Our warm-hearted Hawaiian people encourage you to find inspiration in the abundant beauty of nature. Supreme Master Ching Hai is a highly gifted, multi-talented, and fully enlightened master. She is also a world-renowned humanitarian, environmentalist, author, artist, designer, musician, and a film script writer and film director whose love and care for all beings is boundless. Supreme Master Ching Hai teaches the truth as did Sakyamuni Buddha, Lord Jesus Christ, Lao Tzu, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Guru Nanak, and many others. The Kuan Yin Method has been practiced by all of these enlightened masters and she reminds us of the similarities among all their great teachings. Supreme Master Ching Hai has infinite love, concern, and encouragement for those who wish to improve themselves spiritually. In her book, Aphorisms 2, a compilation of parts of her lectures, she offers words of supreme wisdom which deal with spiritual practice, life, and philosophy, touching the very source of our being, bringing us enlightenment and heavenly bliss. Today, we share with you the wise teachings of Supreme Master Ching Hai with excerpts from the book, Aphorisms 2. We should rise to the noble position of a saint, and to do that, we must possess compassion, love, understanding, and unselfish sacrifice at all times. We should not be afraid to hurt ourselves while benefiting others, because the path we tread is the way of the saints, the way of the masters. When a master comes to earth, not only are the disciples uplifted and shown wisdom, but the whole race of humankind is purified and uplifted to a certain higher level of consciousness. You have to be flexible. That's why we need wisdom and love, not only rules and laws. The law of love transcends everything. Do things with love, with purity and wisdom. That's all I ask of you. Humility doesn't come with the title, very humble. It comes from within. When we all realize that we are children of God and we and the Father are one, that is where true humility begins. Initiation is meant to remind you of your greatest inheritance, and then you can make use of your treasure every day, instead of relying on any master at all, whether dead or alive. That is the purpose of our method and practice, and there is no other purpose besides that. Here in this world, the mind controls everything. The preconceived ideas, the prejudices, the collected data control everything and make us forget our inborn nature and that we are not these preconceived ideas. We are not to forget our judgment. We have to find our inborn wisdom. By observing the precept of not telling anything but the truth, Whatever we say will benefit others, and whatever we say will come true. A self-realized soul emits a kind of godly fragrance and super-mundane virtue that everyone loves to be near and everyone feels naturally comfortable with. Each time we take any action, we reflect what God thinks of our action. If what we are doing pleases God, then it is righteous. We should think more positively, optimistically, and courageously, and then it will become a habit, for everything is created by the mind. When we help other people, we should say, I am doing it in the name of God. Then we will not incur any blessed reward or karmic retribution. After we have purified our actions, speech, and thoughts, everything we do is right and befits the way of the truth. This is why we should pursue spiritual practice. The light of heaven will cleanse all the darkness for eons, billions, trillions of years from within our souls. The more you are exposed to the sense of the needy's suffering, the more you feel your compassion being touched. And then you want to do something for that person or that animal or that situation. 
and then that's how your NQ noble quality grows. The more we exert our loving kindness and protection towards all beings, the greater we will be in the world, the greater will be the feeling in our heart as well as in the kingdom of heaven. The more we spiritual practitioners look inward, the better we will be. Within us are our virtuous qualities, supreme wisdom and greatest power. If we turn outward, the power and the concentration of our wisdom will be dispersed. Do not lose your original self or personal demeanor for the sake of anyone. Only in this way can we be original, genuine, and natural. We'll be charismatic, lovely, and beautiful. It is not good to imitate anyone. We never know what's good for us. It's better to just try our best and accept whatever comes. But you always have to try your best. In that way, you'll rest in peace and you'll know that you have tested your strength and wisdom. Usually, even if we know our past mistakes, we do not have the power to repent. If we can truly repent, however, our karmic hindrances will be erased. We must really practice spiritually in order to repent. Therefore, we still need to meditate. Once we are enlightened, we see things from a higher standpoint, from a higher intelligence, and we see that nothing happens by accident or nothing occurs by our own doing. We are, in fact, one. No matter what we do for each other, it is the same as doing it for ourselves because we love each other. That is the essence of life. The essence of life is love. The essence of God, of Buddha, of Allah is love. We practice spiritually inside, but should apply it to the outside. Then, seeing the results of our practice, we will feel very comfortable knowing that spiritual practice is very useful and we are progressing well. Make sure that every precept you keep is physically, astrally, and intellectually all clean and pure. Of course, we can't help it if a habit rises up again, but we can help by stopping it, not following it, and not making excuses for ourselves. Our tiny bit of wisdom can be either developed or destroyed. When we're with spiritual people and wise friends, our wisdom will glow more brightly and develop more fully. The more we respect others, the less our ego and arrogance will be. The more we lessen our ego, the nobler, wiser, and freer we'll be. We'll be free from the bondage of this humble self free from the feelings of sensitivity, free from the pain of an inferiority complex. Gracious viewers, thank you for spending time with us on Words of Wisdom. 